that's my warning. Don't go to church. Morning, friends. This video is not just for those who go to church. If you don't go to church, that's none of my business. It's actually nobody else's business either but yours. I mean, you're... Your journey in life is yours and it's not mine to judge or anybody else's, and I hope you never feel that way. But um, what I'm gonna talk about in this video, this warning, I think impacts you as well, uh, because we're gonna see this spread fairly quickly. Um, and it's, and it, it, it involves a lot more than just churchgoers. We're seeing a lot of crazy things out there these days, and I think it has a lot of people on edge, a lot of people anxious. I just saw numbers the other day saying that the number of households in the U.S. Uh, that are food insecure have reached record numbers. Uh, record numbers. That's a, that's a level of desperation, or at least a record within the last, over the last decade or so. Um, but that's, that's a significant number. I'm sure that when you go back far enough in history, there are times when there was more in food insecurity, especially during the Great Wars. Um, but that's a that's a level of desperation. I think we're going to see see peel over as as things progress. Um, we've obviously we've seen you know Gen X and Gen Zers in positions where they're unable to get the types of jobs that the the boomers had, and I think that that's going to have an impact on society as well. But this warning I think comes at a time when um, when there's a lot more going on. Uh, we've seen this morning that Israel has started its ground invasion of Gaza. And there are a lot of people who are viewing this war as a much more significant event. Um, obviously, we've, we've been at war uh, for a while now, Ukraine and Russia, and we've been involved in that war. So for me to say we've been at war is, is not an understatement. And we're at war again in Israel. And the period of time that we're in, there are a lot of analysts that I read, and I'll talk about this next week, who would refer to it as a 120-year cycle, and we're in the fourth turning of that cycle. The fourth turning of that cycle is um, is a period of time that is causing. It's a. It's a. The cycles are based on sociological and psychological behaviors of people and. and specifically the Western world, but I think that it applies globally on many scales. But um, basically it's a period of time when you hit the fourth turning of unrest. Um, at the end of the last fourth turning, we had World War II. Um, before that, there was the Civil War. Before that, there was the Revolutionary War. You can see where this goes. So there's some evidence that supports this series, this, this theory. And during these times, you tend to have a lot of crazy business happen. So here's what I've come to understand. And um, from reading these cycles and, and trying to figure out where they're, they're coming from, and, and this applies to the warning um, that I'm about to give you. Uh, and that is that, you know, people, society, you know, after its period of good feelings, as it, as it grows and develops, tends to lose touch with a lot of things like church groups, civic organizations. And when you look at society, when you look at what's built it, when you drive through an old country town, you'll see, you know, signs that look like they've been put up 30 years ago from rotary clubs, lions clubs, things like that. And, you know, those buildings are now deteriorating because less funds are going into those organizations to help keep up those towns. And when you think about just you know, the growth of America in general, and you think about people who came here as groups and the congregations, and they, they built churches and they built their towns around those churches. And th those churches and those groups, whatever tied those people together is what built their communities, right? That's what created a sense of community. And within that community, you had opposing political views. Within that community, you had opposing views to a lot of different things, but the community was held together by the glue of the civic groups, the organizations, the churches that brought those people together. And so when you destroy that, what you have at the end is just a bunch of people with different political views. When you take all that away, there is nothing that holds that community together. And what I think that we see 
in these periods of time of fourth turning is, a, is, is an attack on a lot of these organizations. When you look at COVID, the COVID lockdowns, people were restricted from being able to go to church and look at what happened. A lot of people still haven't returned to church. A lot of people just stopped going. And ironically, during that period of time, whether you had a certain belief or not about you know, vaccines, what was going on, those churches could have been a pillar for their community. They could have given people the strength to stand for what they believe. You know, when I walk into a church and, and I, you know, I'm one of those people who is very faithful. I, I have always lived my life off faith. I would not have the family I have and, and, and the life I have if I did not have faith. But I also, for many years, did not refer to myself as a religious person. I did not feel that I needed to indoctrinate my children with an institutional thought. Um, and I still feel that way on many levels. But when I was sitting in church and I was reflecting on all of these things a while back, it, it occurred to me that by us not going to church, because we believe we have our faith, we, we have our, our own understanding, we, we practice it, we put it, we put it into practice every day. Why do we need to go to church, right? That's one of the things. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to sit through all of that every single week. I, every day, am out practicing those things and developing my own relationship. And maybe it's not church for you. Maybe it's a civic organization. Maybe it's a cultural organization. You know, when I was in Canada, I was invited to go to dinner at a Ukrainian um, lodge where they basically, it's, it's you know, a, a cultural lodge where they do Ukrainian dancing. They they, they host, you know, dinners for the community. They do a lot of things. It's a community of people that have a common interest. And I'm sure if you, if you talk to those people about what's going on in Russia and Ukraine, there's probably many split thoughts on it, you know, because not everybody who's Ukrainian supports Zelensky, right? But at the same time, even with that war going on, these people who are split on, on a very large political topic, would come together and do these things for their community. That's what builds their community. And it's a, a, a marvelous thing. And when I was, um, back when the Berlin Wall was coming down, I remember being at the German American Club in Miami because our family attended the German American Club. And you know, it's funny, you, we hear all these things about race, and this, that, and the other thing, but if you look at your genetics, and I would not submit yourself to a genetics test if you haven't, but if you have and you look at your genetic history, we're a mix of everything. I mean, if you go far enough back, you'll find a little bit of everything in you. If you're racist, I'd suggest not doing it because you might find yourself being disappointed with yourself. But for those of us who are curious and open to understanding that we have a history, a very long history, thousands of years that takes us back, um, you'll find that you have connections with many different groups of people. But finding some cultural connections that you can tie into, I, I just remember, you know, even back then, there were mixed feelings about what was going on in Berlin, but everybody was, was supportive of each other. And when that wall came down, it was a, it was a big party. But uh, it, I mean, these, being a part of these groups is essential to society. These groups are the glue that keep people together when there's chaos somewhere else, right? And that's what I think has happened. When we look at things today, those groups are faltering. Those groups aren't there. And so when you choose not to go to church, when you choose not to go to your Ukrainian dinner club, when you choose not to you know, go to your Oktoberfest and, and enjoy some time with your, with your German comrades, whatever it is, um, when you choose not to do those things, then you're, you're removing a part of that support block. And the, the more that support block gets deteriorated, what are we left in society with? What are we left with? We're, we're left with what we hear on the media. We're left with politics. We're left with a lot of ugly things because there's nothing beautiful behind the community that's holding it together. So whether or not you know you you look at church as a as a place to to go for for worship, or you look at it as a place to go to support a community, when you look back at COVID, I started talking about that. If you were going to church and you had that group of people who could support you in your thought process and not judge you for it, um, a lot of people would have been a lot stronger back then. 
and, and stronger in whichever direction they wanted to go. You know, this isn't a political thing, and that's the thing that's, that's crazy about it. It's these organizations aren't political things, but they've come under attack. They've come under attack a lot. Um, even, you know, outdoor recreation preparedness groups um, have come under attack, and a lot of foundations, as I've said on, on previous videos, have stepped in to, uh, to the rescue with all sorts of new things that they require people to be involved with, um, and that's uh, supporting their groups. And, and then you end up seeing people who would have traditionally supported those other groups walk away, and their groups get even stronger. Um, and that's, that's kind of where we are right now. We're at this point where we've seen this deterioration. We've seen the glue that holds communities together deteriorate. And without that glue, like I said, we're left with the ugly. And that ugly tends to spiral out of control. And when you, when you read about these turning events, that is specifically what happens in the fourth turning. That is the societal and the psychological collapse of society that leads people down to this this road. At the end, you have this new world order. Even the you know president of the United States is talking about us going into a phase of time when we're going to come out on the other side of new world order, and we must come out on top. Um, so this isn't you know a conspiracy theory. This isn't you know a flawed theory. In, in my opinion, I actually do agree with those turning events when you read about what it is that they're explaining is happening. And, and my warning is, if you do not go to church, if you do not involve yourself with these organizations, if you do not get out there and become a part of your community in, in other ways, other ways other than your political party, other ways other than, you know, the, 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 the today's standard would be, you, you go back to some of those older concepts of community, those older concepts of civic groups, those older concepts that held communities together. If you don't do that, see what happens. See what happens to society. It'll get a lot worse. It's going to. I mean, you and I, you, you, we ourselves cannot change the direction of a society or a community. It takes a group to do that. And that's where, you know, these, these organizations, these churches, these things are doing. So I decided, you know, whether or not I feel like I need to be there for my own spiritual growth. Going to church offers so much more beyond myself, beyond, you know, what I need. It offers an entire group of people strength to what they need. And, and that is, you know, what it's about. That's, that's really what has held America's communities together. As we've gotten into bigger and bigger cities, as we've gotten into bigger and bigger, you know, suburbs, a lot of that has faded, a lot of that has failed. And, and yeah, people do sports, right? You, you sit in a dugout and, and you, you, you hit a few balls when they're pitched to you, but that's not the same thing as these organizations and groups that I'm talking about. You know, look at your local Lions Club, look at your local ro Rotary Group, look at the age of the people that are involved in those groups, and you'll realize that the young people just aren't even involved. They're not getting there. And yet, when you, we look throughout history at the importance of these groups and holding society together, bringing people together, hosting Christmas parades and, and things in your small town, if these groups go away, so does all of that. And it's happening in real time. It is happening in real time. So don't go to church, see what happens. Don't involve yourself, see what happens. I know in, in recent years, we had uh, just through default life circumstances had removed ourselves from a lot of things. We moved into our, our community, oh, nine years ago, and we didn't even know people in our community because we weren't out in the community. We weren't involved in the community. And then, you know, when we got to the point where we could be, we had our own issues going on, um, COVID hit. So then we weren't again. And then, you know, as time progressed, our work took us on travels across North America, which was fantastic. And we built a, an extended community. And I, and I think that's a, it's an important thing in the modern world is that your community can be an extended community. It can be a community where you could reach and stay in touch with people in, in other countries, cross state lines, very easily. You could very easily build, 
you know, an online community that offers the support that I'm talking about as well. But there's still that, that immediate community in your area that needs you. It needs your involvement. Um, and that's why, you know, my wife and I, a few weeks ago, we, we launched what we call the youth, Rural Youth Development Fund because what we're seeing are these young kids who can't even afford to get into some of these programs, can't even afford to be involved in some of the activities. And so what we, what we, our goal is to help them get involved in cultural activities, outdoor activities, agricultural activities again, rebuild some of that sense of community that holds us together. Because if we don't, if we don't, and we do go into, if, if this truly is a fourth turning event, what is society gonna look like on the other side? You know, if, if this is, if, if the theory holds true, right? And we're going into a 120 year cycle of war and destruction, and we're also entering a fourth turning. And I, I'll do a video on this because there are a lot of different things, all, you know, all the way down to Nostradamus predictions of what could be happening right now. And the problem is people believe it. If, if, if the thought wasn't there to support it, it wouldn't happen. But the thought is there to support it. And that's where I think that this fourth turning thing, the psychological uh, influences on society um, and sociological, um, that is, in, in my viewpoint, what, what we're seeing, what's happening. And if we don't start stepping it up, the other side of it is not going to be a pretty picture. I don't care what you think. You know, you might think, well, people are just going to go out and go crazy and, you know, and, and, and then the only people that are going to be left are the good ones. That's not true. Look at Gaza. You know, you think that the only people left are good ones? They wouldn't still be bombing it. A lot of the people who have died over there have been good people. A lot of the people who have died over there have been bad people. And I understand it's war. And I'm not siding against Israel in any way in that statement. I'm just saying what happens when these things go down is a lot of people get hurt. A lot of people, it doesn't matter who they are. But when you can pull people together in a community, when you can pull a community together, and you can strengthen that community and you can give people within that community relationships and, and strength that go beyond and can cross some of these barriers that we've been built up on, like politics and, and all that. That's when you have a positive outcome. But without that, there is no future to look at. And that's the reality of it. And that's my warning. Don't go to church. See what happens.